talking about? I don't know if I was going to throw you in. Well, I can talk about conceptually what you're talking about. They all, they wouldn't, nobody would second what you. Nobody ever second for me. <laughs> I saw that. I mean, sometimes I have seen you be the lone sole person that yeah. said yes, and you know, stand up for it, but. Yeah, um, yeah, what I was referring to is we have, right now, based on current trends and growth, we assume we've got enough water capacity with our current treatment plant and, and our surface water and our, our lake water to get us to about 2037. And that's inclusive of some, some increases that are planned in there, like the, the Buffalo Creek and a few other things. So there's some step up to get us to 2037. That's not that far out. You, government takes a lot of time to plan ahead. You don't just snap your fingers and do something tomorrow. Sometimes you have to look five, 10 years out and start preparing now. Whether it's permitting, it's funding, whatever the case. When we started building more and more out east, that wasn't factored in our 2037. So my argument was somebody's got to figure out where we're going to come up with money to increase our current planned capacity to get us past 2037. Otherwise, all of this development is going to take 2037 and make it to 2035 and 2033. Exactly. We're going to get so close that we're going to run out of time to do anything. Our only option is to run the Peach River, which for a number we can. But here's the problem with Peach River, and I'm on board, so I'll, I'll tell you. It's much more expensive water, and it doesn't connect to us right now. For us to even get the water from Peach River, we, the water payers of Madison County, have to pay for all the rest of the piping to get from Peach River to us. Sarasota's built a lot of it, but we have to pay them our proportional share for what they've already invested. And they don't have the reservoir system and capacity themselves to even collect the water for us. So we would have to build the capacity at Peach River for them to collect the water from the from Peach River to then pipe up to us. And then we have to pay them for the water they're piping up to us for the pipes we paid for from the reservoir we built. That's not a good idea. Yeah, if good. You think your water's expensive now? Actually, no. Double I know my water's water water expensive now. It's much better figure out how to get more capacity locally. It gives us control of our water, it gives us control of our rates, and it keeps things right here in Madison County. We need to come up with funds to do that. And again, to your rates, you're never going to build new capacity in rates. You don't collect enough in rates to build new capacity. You collect enough money in rates to create some efficiencies in service, uh, you do it to replace some pipes, to increase capacity, we need to come up with real funding sources relative to who you need to do it, or you have to increase rates so dramatically to create that much more bonding capacity. And even then, you run into issues because once we go from a triple A to a double A, our rates go up. So even then, even if I create the cushion. So why didn't they want to listen to you? Because they don't want to increase my rates. They I want guess, to get I guess, like it. And if they say guess, yes to increase something, like, yeah, I mean, the, 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 concept is, the concept has always been here to keep costs as low as humanly possible for everybody. Uh, with, without, without, in my mind, without factoring in the consequences long term. Like, anybody can keep costs low for four years for their term. The issue is who's going to be the person on the board 10 years from now when, when the dam breaks, or 20 years from now when we run out of water capacity in 2037 or whatever it is? Those are the people who are going to look back at me and look back at this board, and look back at previous boards who also didn't do it, this isn't the board specifically, this is the previous board. I said, you, you guys left us out to dry here. They're the ones who are gonna have to jack up prices and fees to quickly fix a problem. Just like we do when we complain that other people didn't fix the utilities, and other people didn't fix the infrastructure. You've already heard me say, other people didn't build the roads. People in West Prairie, it's easy to blame somebody in Fulton. We did the same thing with Piney Point. Why didn't people fix Piney Point when they had a chance 20 years ago? He blamed somebody else. We're going to be the people they blame 20 years from now when they're out of money and we're out of water capacity and we still haven't fixed all of our infrastructure because we outbuilt the infrastructure even though we were trying to build the former infrastructure. I'd rather be right now. But they're going to point to you because look, we had 15,000 people in December of 22 trying to stop y'all from building out east past the FDAP. Again, I'm and. I know you did, but you know it's it's like <laughs> it's like 
it's like these people trying to push Medicare for all now when they don't have control that you know the house. It's like it's it feels like theater, George, because it's like, why you do it now when it, when the crucial time to do it was in December, you know, when, or last year when the policy came up? It's like this was a dumb policy. I understand there that there are problems with the comprehensive plan. And I, I get that. And, and, I, and I agree with you that it would need, would need an overhaul. But then what we've done is allow this window where now it's kind of seemingly selective and certain people, it, well, you know, I mean, the, the problems with East River Ranch are, are just like compounding, you know, the complaints <laughs> that we have seen with Taylor Ranch, you know, uh, the, uh, the risk to the racetrack is just only one thing, you know, but really the bigger risk is that watershed area because uh, I saw Zephyr Hills is already pulling back on development because they're now seeing that, hey, we're really getting to run a risk of running out of water. So they're, you know, we shouldn't have to get to that point. We'd like to have some folks with some vision, you know, to say, hey, you know, like, let's look at what's our, well, you say, you, you keep bringing up the state for capacity, what, 2037? It's like, well, what is the, what, we're like, really, this is the question we've all been asking. What's the capacity now and where, and where, where are you going to hit it, you know, for this development out east, especially uh, near Lake Manatee? You know, people out there have wells and, you know, it's very real that wells do dry up. So uh, the question is, <laughs> I, I, there's sort of, it's more of a complaint. <laughs> And none of it's affordable, and, 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 George. It just irks me because it's like we, the public, came out and spent hours. People called in. I think I called in, you know, to, to tell you all. And they said, look, and the, the re repeated complaint is always water. 
the racetrack was new, you know, because in the, you know, that was, you know, for us locally that has been sitting on these meetings all the time. But the main issue is water, clean water, to make sure that we have sufficient water out into the future. And we get laughed at and condescended to about, we have plenty of water, but then we have to, I mean, yeah, we should generally conserve water, but then you get, hey, conserve water uh, warnings in emails and, and publications, you know, it's like, okay, do we have water? Or do we not have water? You know, and I know, you know, there's issues with the pipes, you know, yeah, that's going to happen. But, you know, out east, seriously, people with wells, you know, Mimi Swan of East Manatee, she's worried that y'all are going to dry out her well. It doesn't go along with the rest of your, I, I agree with your narrative. Picture water thing is like the second or third person. We have a cyclical rainy season. Uh, our lake goes down when during dry season. That's when you get the things about the server. That doesn't mean we don't have sufficient capacity. That doesn't mean that the water's not gonna rise. Peach River does the same thing. That's the, the river goes down, the river comes up, depending on what time of year it is. And you get to conserve water because we're prohibited to have our water level drop below a certain amount. Otherwise we have to take our water sources from other places or so that's when you get those. It, that's not necessarily a capacity issue per se. Mm -hmm. Sure, but you know, obviously, naturally, logically, ten thousand new homes is going to stress that in future times. I, I try to run. I, I put a motion out to reassess our facility investment fee because I think we're collecting about seventeen hundred per home in facility investment fees, which go towards capital improvements and expansion of our water. I think it's probably should be closer to like five or seven thousand, not seventeen hundred. I don't know that. that I try to make a motion to do a study on that and maybe get the best time. Um, I made the motion to pull the, the policy. I've already talked to utilities. And I said, and I talked to our developers. I said, maybe we, if we can't get a motion to change the facility investment fee for everybody else, maybe we can at least tier it and have a different investment fee east of the outlet for all these people building now because we can charge them 25000 And that could help cover the, the capacity issues with that feature, but we never did that. That's why I'm saying it's a bad policy because people didn't, un people didn't factor in the unintended consequences of the policy. That's I why I watched it a few times, but uh, they, had, they asked somebody to come and look at the committee member who were there, did you check on all these uh, additional features, the water, the sewer, the, all, and, and he said it's all fine. I remember him saying that, and I'm thinking, yeah. He said it on TV. I don't know if but even with everything was fine. That's no wonder they voted on it. But East River, they we had feedback from the state talking about the roads and failure of the roads, and y'all still. I know you voted against it, but you royal you, the seven of you in total, passed it anyway. <laughs> You're only one seventh, but the the you as the collective you all y'all it passed it, and and I know you you specifically voted against it, but it's just like. It's very frustrating because we're, people are telling you, you can't say the board didn't know. You were told, and you were told multiple times through the public, multiple times, even now to the state, you know, that they have concerns, and you just blew past it, and it's like I WTF. <laughs> more to try to kill that thing. I'm honestly shocked they were six to one. I'm shocked. I, I, I didn't necessarily, first off, I thought it was going to be successful. I, I thought I'd get this three. I thought I'd just get one. something because I've been there and sat there for hours to comment. It doesn't change anything. Get people to email about something. It doesn't really change anything. Like what is the way for us as citizens to have a voice in the decisions being made? Beyond voting, I get that. Vote the right people in. But when it's happening, like what is the, the solution? <laughs> is there one or no? <laughs> I stopped going because it's just frustrating. I take the day off from work. I sit there. I bring 30 people with me to come talk about this, and it doesn't make a difference. So, what does what makes a difference? Honestly, beyond voting the right people, and can't give up. 
Uh, you don't know what's going on there. No, so. no I'm, I'm, I'm going to try to give you a real life, because the, the, the canned answer, which is, uh, which is not true, is we still have to wait here until a comes plan and so forth. So people, people can come and complain and, and say, please don't do this, but, but it's coming. we're just going to get sued. And we get sued all the time. You, you see in the paper right now, there's in the Observer today, because I, I live out there and I, I spoke out against it. There's a car dealership getting built right by my neighborhood, and they all came out. Thousands of them in red shirts. I was one of them at the time. It was before I went on board. And they sued and bought whatever. Couldn't do a thing about it. The court said, nope. The comp plan says they're allowed to do that. They did that. The board spoke. And on the flip side, we declined. I, I can't speak for business litigation, but, well, I can speak about this one. The board, a previous board, declined uh, a, a project on State Road 70 by a very nice neighborhood. Of, and there was a piece that they wanted to build, and they were allowed to build, and now we're settling. I think it was in the newspaper. Yeah, it's, settled. it's public now. Mm -hmm. and, and we have to pay the we have to pay the developer like three and a half million dollars. Why? Because the board voted no on something that was technically within the comp plan in theory. I wasn't there at the time the comp plan changes, but that was the argument that they made. Now the taxpayers, not the board, the taxpayers are up three and a half million dollars to repay developers for a decision the board made because the public all came out from town and said, please don't approve this. And they said, we'll listen to you. and didn't approve it. Now we're out three and a half million dollars. It, it's very tough. The state of Florida and the statutes make it very difficult for a board to make independent decisions, uh, almost to a fault. It, there's a lot of preemption. There's a lot of restrictions on what we can and can't do. Greater. It doesn't give us a ton of gray area. It doesn't give us no gray area. And as a perfect example, we just had a project come in front of us uh, that wanted to use the future land use map to build very high density out west on Elton Beach Shore. And I said, I can't give you this reason. You're not telling me what you're going to do with this. I'm just not going to hand you 107 or whatever unit blindly without even knowing what you're going to do. And the rest of the board agreed with us. They actually continued it and walked out. Within the comp plan, could they have built it? Maybe within the future land? But there is some subjectivity. And so we do have some. I would say, to go back to your question, though, because I don't know if I'm very fancy, it's hard to come in and just all wear the same color shirt. Uh, it's hard to, it was have a really compelling thing. And a perfect example is the, the trailers with, with their property, with the, the road going through. We, we, that was a very compelling story. And part of that approval was a stipulation that, that, that the developer would not build over their backyard solely because of them coming out and speaking out about that. So people do listen. I would honestly say though, the better way in my personal opinion, you're not gonna just, you're not gonna talk to all seven people on the board simultaneously. Especially at four in the afternoon when the meeting started at nine in the morning or on the eighth thing. It's tough. You're better off having conversations like this one on one with people. I've had a ton well, I do this every month, but I also meet with people all the time. What I about your people? Who, how do you talk to them? We chat. Amanda Ballard, who's in District 2, she has a town hall yesterday. Okay. Town hall's very so That's nice. my other question. The only way I. Oh, let me, just, let me just finish that. So I, I say your best way of getting your voice heard is to get your voice heard before this is a specific topic. Uh, talk to people about the need for water conservation. Talk to people about the need for increasing water capacity, focusing on water capacity as, a, as an approval, focusing on doing infrastructure, focusing on, not based on a single project where someone can put a face of a developer to it that maybe they're friends with. Try to talk to, I'm not saying all the, all the board members, because some of them, you know which ones will kind of listen, which ones won't. Pick out the ones you think, maybe you're kind of on the fence a little bit. Talk to them first. Because the next time they come up, even if you're out there, that, that water capacity may pop into the back of their mind because of a conversation I was had. That interest in what in buffers, watersheds, things, that'll pop in. I, I honestly think that's the better way of doing that. I think you get more out of it by starting to change the mind fundamentally and, and, and on a large scale than on a deal with it. Just, I don't mean to cut it off, but. Oh, her answer is this. I, I already cut it off. Oh, okay. I caught um, District 2's town hall coming out Monday. I saw it on the website. But I didn't see anything about the water. Minor secret. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, 
we need to like email? I'm, I'm curious. I'm curious about email. Um, no. Uh, mine. Yeah. I posted on the website. Mine was on Twitter. I, I don't. The only social media I use is Twitter. Um, I I posted mine. I have a Substack that I occasionally send stuff out on. I use Twitter a lot. So I posted all my dates at least for the first six months, way back in January, and then I reposted it a few times since. And I posted all the July through December a couple weeks ago, and I'll repost that after today. For tonight, I posted it a few times. I know a few people shared it on Facebook themselves. Um, the Manatee Library Twitter page and the government page shared it on Twitter. I just don't really use Facebook or anything like that. So no, I was just like, I just thought it would be nice to be on the Manatee County website. I agree. If only I knew somebody who knew people who would be on the website. <laughs> <laughs> Best idea yet. Yeah. Here's a very fast answer that I don't know what I mean. The, the, the governor does it for, for county. The, the governor does whenever he gets around. But she's still in until July 31st, she won't be before July 31st. Sarasota lost one of their commissioners, what, April? The commissioner of the year passed away. They, he just reappointed somebody for that seat about 10 days ago, two Fridays ago, 12 days ago. So it, it takes a little bit of time. But the, for county level, local level, the governor appoints. It gets to a state level, it's, that's when you get to the, the special election. Her seat was up in 2024 anyway, so whoever gets reappointed, I would guess sometime give or take in August. That seat will almost immediately have to file with somebody running because they'll have the primary in August. Thank you. Um, a few meetings ago, I think that there was a group from a community called Soleil that during public comment, they were saying that I think they were promised, I think it was reclaim water and that DR Horton didn't deliver it. Like that, and then the chair cut him off, saying this is a civil matter. Um, so maybe there's more to it than I mean. I don't. I'm not privy to the information, but there's always more to it. I don't correct. know what that more is, um, but it, because they were cut off. I, I have no. I haven't spoken to them. Okay. Uh, D.R. Horton is a private developer who built their houses, and okay. depending on how many houses were sold and, and the timing of that sale, D.R. Horton either still controls the HOA or since turned over the HOA, and maybe has some residual. Liability associated with that. To the chairman's point, that's an HOA. Like we just like I can't tell people in City of Bradenton what to do. I can't tell the school board to. I can't tell an HOA what to do. I, if they're an independent government body, even if an HOA doesn't feel like it, they are. Same thing with CD. So, so I think where he was going at was this wasn't the county promising something to them. Dear Horton may, by extension, turn to us and say, hey, wait a minute, I'm not giving this to you because the county promised me to reclaim water in exchange for some well credit. That's a different story. Then that starts, we start entering into that. That didn't sell a gallon case. That's that. And we get that all the time, honestly. We get people saying, hey, my HOA won't be parked on the street. Right. My HOA won't let me do. We don't interfere. Like, well, I, I agree with the chair's point that I don't want y'all using our tax dollars to fight some lawsuit that the HOA needs to be doing. It seems like it's a several years old, the development, so I would imagine it's been handed over. But my point was, if they are using our drinking water, because they were saying that they have to you know, pay for their water that they're using to, to water their lawn, um, I do have an issue with that, that if you guys approve the development with the idea that they were going to be using reclaimed water and the developer did not do that, it sounds like you guys wrote a letter, at least that's what they said in public comments, you've interjected yourself that there might be some truth to that, that we should at least, moving forward, not approve developments by that builder. If their past performance is that they are not delivering a product, that you guys are approving the development based on the information they provide, then, then no go until you make it right. It's just, and I have no connection to it. That was just my thought process when I was watching it. Yeah, no, that's valid, that's valid. Um, and, uh, um, We've been talking a lot about water, so yeah, I mean. You, what you're talking about is kind of like three steps downstream from where we ever see it. I don't know if our approval get to a point of approving contingent upon using reclaim water. My neighbor doesn't have reclaim water on, on my half of the neighborhood. I'm watering, I'm watering my lawn here drinking water too. Um, but if the statements that were made were accurate, I, I if they you. submitted that potential, I guess that's my homework assignment for you. Because I, <laughs> I would like you, I'm a teacher, I'd like you to kind of research if there is truth to that. And the county commission, which actually that would have been before you were on the board, because I think development's seven years old or something like that. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, but if that development was approved with that stipulation 
and that has not happened, then moving forward, I don't think anything should be approved. Uh, I don't think we can legally do that. We, we, did, we did super they, performance and forced them to do something that they promised to do. I don't think the state of Florida or any court in the state is going to allow us to ignore our comp plan and disapprove future projects for the sole and absolute purpose of you're watering your lawn no, no. stuff over here on this project, so I'm not gonna I'm gonna not approve your project over here. That that'll never hold up in court. But if if it was a stipulation, if that's a big if was a stipulation of approval that they only use reclaimed water to water their lawn, then we could sue for performance and force them to change out their system to do okay. it. That would be our recourse. I've been on the board for almost three years now. I've never once approved a single project that was in, that had water, lawn watering stipulations. Like we, I've never had, not once have we approved anything that required them to water their lawn with certain types of water. Maybe you'll get lucky if that's I'm just, I'm just saying <laughs> yeah, for, three years, for three years, I never have once. So I would be led to believe that's not an approval stipulation. Right. That's okay. just, something somebody put into engineering or they thought it was more economical and if they decided hey it's no longer economical they didn't do it i don't know what recourse we would have well i'd probably not use my tax dollars to sue for performance when the hoa should be doing that but if you could use a little leverage to make them do right in the future that's what i'm saying yeah. um, and then the other two are easy um i think the water taxi is going to be starting or something um at some point maybe and I just, on behalf of people that live North River, it seems to me since the Green Bridge and DeSoto traffic is real, like it's real. I know they said maybe they would add a stop north of the river later on, but it seems to me that we should start with a stop north of the river. Like it doesn't make any sense to me that we're going to take a water taxi down the river and stop a couple places in Brainton, but not in Parish or Palmetto. That's nuts because Parish is the fastest growing place in the county. <laughs> What kind of boats do you think we're, we're flying? I mean, these things are slow boats. They're getting all the way to Fort. They don't have anywhere. They, they're not going to be that many people on them, George. <laughs> it's okay. There's no place to park. I mean, you might at least the captain will have more places to drive. I get it. The, the, the plan is ultimately, if it works, to have it much wider and have more boats and have more capacity and go out to Fort Hammer and go up to Riverhouse and come down here and then maybe stop somewhere along the way on the, you know, at, Anna Maria, and then Elms Beach, and then Brayton Beach, and then Longboat Key, maybe even work with Sarasota and make an intercoastal thing. Uh, there's a big hypothetical find the sky plan. The initial thing was, hey, does this even work? Does anybody even care? Was get people from downtown because we have a parking garage. Because that's the thing, you can't just have a stop. You have to have facilities for people to use while they're waiting for the boat. You have to stop someplace for them to park their car. We don't have that in all these places. We have some in, in Fort Ham, in Fort Ham, but that's far away. That, that is a long hike, and it's a small bathroom and a parking on some days. It's fully full with, with boat parking. So the thought was, we can use a parking garage here downtown, have people hop on. It goes just to at the top of Anna Maria and the bottom of Bradenton Beach at, at Bridge Street, and come back, test it out, see how this works. That's perfect. And there is. Well, I guess it's a compromise. Fort Hammer is pretty far, but Palmetto does have parking along the pier there. They're about to lose all their boat parking, but they do have parking for cars, and it's not that much further for the boat to just motor over to Palmetto. Mm -hmm. I can't take private parking to use for a public place. You can theoretically park there for up to an hour before you get towed. Mm -hmm. the, the no, the city, for those of us that happen to live in the city and the county, huh. we can, I mean, anybody can park at the at the bridge. I'm trying to figure out which parking lot you're speaking of. Which one are you talking about? I'm talking There's all the parking for River House and all that. Right, I'm talking, no, I'm talking about the little park uh, uh, oh, by, by the old Green Bridge. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, I, oh, I see. Oh, you're talking about this. Park. And, oh, and just. This. Looking also, I'm also thinking about all the young people that, you know, that want to go to the beach in the summer and their parents are not going to drive them out there and they, quote, don't feel safe on the transit, even though I've been riding it since I was like nine. Um, but, you know, their parents can drop them off there and they could shuttle out to the beach. And it just seems to make sense to me. Okay, let's, let's, 
It's an easy fix. It's an easy yes. I'm not, I'm not averse to your suggestion. Okay. I'm just telling you what the proposal was, and I don't control the board. Okay. The, the decision was to do these three stops. I, I don't care. Take this up to downtown St. Pete for all I care. You know, as, as long as people write it and, and we right. get some benefit. I just thought it was an opportunity I, to I, throw I, North I, I am personally <laughs> flexible to reps. You have a third question. I get a third question? You, you said you Yes, I would love a third question. The other one is on Northwest Bradenton. So I'm trying to get all the way around the county since you're at large. Okay. Um, Northwest Bradenton, the Botanical Park. Um, you know, it's my understanding that they want a little parcel of that county-owned property. And I, I, I've said for two years, I don't care if they take it. Well, then what's the holdup? Now they're happened. wanting to give a 10-year lease. I'm like my eighth administrator. Come on. <laughs> that's I my problem. Again, that's you. your administrator. I wouldn't have ever hired Scott Holmes. I mean, <laughs> that's, I like know know I that's on you. I wouldn't know what you Okay. <laughs> you gave him a big parachute. Oh, sorry. You're, talking about the, you're talking about the royal name. Okay. <laughs> Hey, I like it. I like it. <laughs> anyway, that, okay, so if you have said for two years, make it happen. Can you just make that happen? That is a great park, and it's not using it's not using county resources. I mean, maybe you guys got a little tourist development for the for the, but a lot of tourists are going to that park. <laughs> oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> she's, she's, she's giving me actual things to look into. I, I know the traffic's bad. I yeah, I, she, she's asked me I'm trying. I like the big issue conversation, but these are little things that you could knock off as wins that would make a lot of people in District Three real happy because we don't have a lot to be happy about. And I don't even live there anymore, but I go to the Botanical Park a lot. That's your answer. It is a cool park. That's your answer. The little things. Seriously, little things. It will. It will build up and it will make bigger difference. But if we try to go for a pie in the sky. As, don't yell me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but that's why I didn't ask a question. For a the sky, then we're, we're just going to get turned down all the time. And if we do the little things like that, then we build that relationship because it is all about relationship. And if everybody's constantly yelling and abusing and being vile, then nobody's going to want to to work together, right? Little things like so that. just little wins. That yeah. park it has a lot of people in the community that enjoy it. A lot of tourists do end up there. People like it's it's pretty packed all the time, and the land is not being used, and it's an amenity that people. Anyway, I would love to see them get that, but I don't want a ten-year lease. It's hard to like invest in it for ten years. Like it needs to be a you know like a hundred-year lease. Okay. Thank you. Botanical garden lands, palmetto dock, and the reclaimed water as well. Thanks. Okay. All right. I'm just trying to, I'm trying to keep my hands going. Me? Okay. All right. Um, it was dovetailing on one of the previous discussions. The pace that these issues are pushed through between the planning commission meeting and then the next meeting when you guys are voting on it is really too short. I mean, because I mean, I, I, mean, I, I get the project list and then you see that, oh, you've got the, and sometimes you see the, the, the signs, oh, the planning commission meeting is this date. And then like the next week, it's like going right, push right before the board. And so the community doesn't have any time to kind of really mull over what happened at the planning commission meeting and then gather up time to come and, you know, take the time off work plan and come to the next meeting. You know, even though pretty much the planning commission is pretty much rubber stamping everything, you know, it's just, come on. I mean, that needs to slow down a bit. I don't think that's even, uh, I think everyone knows that. Planning commission is kind of almost an option. It's an advisory board. I mean, the reality is, something gets applied for and it's going for approval, it's coming to the Board of County Commissioners. That's it's one and only stop of any real meaningful stop. Like the, 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 the planning commission is the advisory board that are people that, that hold different positions in Madison County that understand how to look at uh, projects, that can make recommendations, whether it be telling a developer, hey, maybe you should do this instead of this, or hey, is this really adhered to a comp plan? And they all vote on it, but it's not binding. The real one is us. You're not going to move ours back because people are on the time. It costs money to delay anything. So ours is the one set. All you're trying to do is move the planning commission one up. Not, it's not moving us back. Ours is the real one. Theirs is the advisory. Hmm, let's take a look at it and see if there's any glaring 
problem. So if you could try to move them up, they only meet once a month. So that's your problem, is we meet twice a month, they meet once a month. So if you moved them up to give sufficient cushion, you'd have to move that project an entire month early. Not everyone's got all their environmental stuff done, and their reports done, and their, their studies done, and, their, and the staff report done a whole month early. It, they just don't. So that's just the reality. It, it's just a matter of scheduling and timing and reality. That it's not like I get to move them up a week. But it doesn't matter what you have. And we meet twice a month. So sometimes it's more gap because if they meet second week in June and we're meeting the third week in June, yes, it's a week. But if they're meeting second week in June and it's going all the way to the next one, then it's, it's three weeks. It's just a matter of where the, the calendar is in terms of available agendas. Well, like you said before, you're not obligated to make any of these people money or your low cost. I'm yeah. obligated not to, to intentionally harm them or their projects. Yeah. If they're coming to us proposing something, and once I've run them through the ringer of pre-apps and discussions and engineering reports and providing proper surveys and checking all the boxes and doing it, in fact, I do have some, well, the state of Florida is trying to mess up that from the time that they put in an application, I have to approve it within 180 days or it's 100% approved. I don't care if they propose a water park in your neighborhood. If I fall down on it and don't approve it, it's approved. So there is a restriction. If it's affordable housing, I'm supposed to be on a fast track and then for like 30 days. There is restriction. I can't unduly just drag them on endlessly to make their life miserable out of my own convenience or laziness. I have well, to. No give them some level of reasonable timing. And, and it's not that. It's for public participation. That's what it is, and I think that's meaningful. Well, the thing is that... Well, first off, it, the, the planning commission agenda comes out a week before the planning commission, which even in the tightest time frame is a week before ours, which gives the public two weeks to read, what, 30 pages? And how many people in the public are actually reading these things word for word and coming up with 10? Like, we're going to say, sorry, we're delaying you an entire month for your your big project and costing you the cost of carrying your property for a month and hiring an attorney for the month, your engineer's show, because yeah. these 10 people haven't had time in the last yeah. few weeks to read the stack. No, it's not. It's not. It's not, it's technically not a month, it's delayed, technically it's two weeks from, because if your next meeting was whatever, the next week, then it's just two weeks from that week, so that the, there's a little bit more time. If you're moving our board meeting or if you're moving the planning commission, the planning commission, that's one other Yeah, it's just, it's just kind of, you know, there's a lot of whiplash with like, yeah. I, I hear you, I hear what you're saying, you're not the first person to say it. It's just the reality of the calendar. Our, our agendas are jammed up. Sometimes it gets way delayed because they just go to the next available agenda. And once the agenda is full, it's full. We, we can't require staff, we can't require anyone, to, or public or us, or to, to put 50 things on the agenda just because 49 other people all put in and there's like 50 of them. Things do get delayed, and sometimes there is much bigger buffers, especially when something gets transmitted for a conference because then that, we have the whole buffer waiting for the state. Sorry, two questions. Hold on. Wait, oh, 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 sorry, I thought you were done. No, no, no. no. Yeah, 
This is in California where there's like 47 different ballot issues you have to go for every time you have a primary. Like they're few and far between. I, I don't think you can just ballot an issue at anything. So the answer is it's not reality. Okay. Again, I would talk to Mike Bennett, supervisor election, or I would talk to a state rep to, to get a better handle on that. I'm not an expert on it. My guess is that's not the kind of thing that shows up on the ballot. Okay. Now you can read. Sure. So, uh, my question is the school board, uh, the school district just hired their new person. And while I would have loved to see more diverse pool of candidates, I thought they did a really good job at um, posting all the stuff, um, announcing dates for community discussion. And I thought it was a really good level of transparency. Transparency. Will we be having something like that for the new county administrator? And my second question is, are you going to run again for county commissioner? Because I don't think you filed. Yeah. Um, one, relative to whether or not you're going to have something like that for the county administrator. I think we have something planned. It's more on the lines of what's Yeah. 
very detailed in that report, mind numbing in terms of the, the statistics. This is the impact long term to the community for building that. It, this is the impact, it does affect your school. It, 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 this is the impact of the roads, impact of the parks, impact of the public service, impact of the library. Those are the four main things. And so they're telling you to the penny, this is, if you build this house, it's going to impact the county $22,000 or whatever. So in theory, if you want to break even on that, this $22,000, you can charge for it. So that's going to be a discussion of the board on, in terms of where you want those to be. But it doesn't, it doesn't cover the schools, you said, right? Schools have their, they have, a, they have the exact same thing, but they have their own fee. They make their own decision. Mm -hmm. And they just did, they just <coughs> modified theirs. Fortunately, I, I pushed hard, mainly with the previous school board, um, but we're also the new one. The school board used to have a very regressive impact fee. Like ours are very tiered. You build a 750 square foot home, it's this much. If you build a 1500 square foot home, it's this much. You build a 5,000, it's this much. The school board basically just said, yeah, it's 6,300 bucks per house. I don't care if you're building a studio apartment or if you're building a 5,000 square foot house on the water, you're paying 6,300 bucks. So it was much more problematic for those small, affordable houses because it was a bigger percentage of their construction costs. They've now since switched it and structured their tiers to mirror our tiers. So now they've got a tiered system where it's cheaper when we build smaller to help encourage not only affordable housing, but also not to create too much of a burden on the small group of people. So. Anything else? Question off on library budget? Her first. You first. Go ahead. Um, the 94 homes that were approved on 51st and I think 18th Street East by the railroad tracks in Oviedo. Okay. The little side road that's dirt yeah, road. Yeah, I know those. Can I? Little strip that they got can we get that on the list, like the upgraded? Upgrade. Uh -huh. Upgrade what? The roads. Um. Uh, most roads are on. Are you talking about just paving? No, I'm talking about when you go widening. Oh, buy, buy me a, buy me, I came off 70 the other day because of railroad tracks that the, the um, <clears throat> train was there. So I said, okay, I'll go around. And I literally go down that, I came down that road and I went to come on and off of 70. And the UPS truck was like, okay, the railroad tracks, and yeah. the train's sitting there, so I'm coming this way. And we came. Yeah, you know, I, I put it on the list. I'll uh, look. The reality is a lot of roads need to be wide. There's, there's conforming roads and non-conforming roads. So, you know, conforming roads nowadays are more like 22 or 24 feet wide with 12 foot lanes with, or 10 foot plus lanes with, with bike lanes. Back in the day, conforming was more like 16 to 18 feet wide total. You see that in a lot of roads, especially the older roads in the older parts of town. It's very hard to turn the non-conforming to conforming. It's right of ways and so forth, just keep the same number of lanes so you're not increasing capacity. So from a cost standpoint and where it falls on the CIP, that's harder. Not possible, but again, it's, it's you're basically rebuilding a road from scratch because you gotta buy the right of way and redo it. And again, it's eight million dollars per lane mile, sixteen million dollars per total mile on a two lane road. So it, it's just a matter of we have a CIP that goes out years and years and years. It's just things to tick off. So even if someone has a great idea we need to do this Unless there's extenuating circumstances for safety or whatever, but there's a lot of people with safety issues with non conforming roads. Yeah, it took me 12 years to decide what my 50 first. I know how But you have it now. So now the guy can use the sidewalk when your kids are going to school. Yeah, I, I love that. I love side. I think all our money should be going to sidewalk, bike ramps, and uh, intersections. But I, walk I mean, honestly, if you fix all the intersections, you barely even need to touch the road. It's the intersection. It's, it's the slip lanes, it's the turn lanes, it's the, the poor lighting. It, that's your problem. It's the intersections that slow down the roads that make things safe. It, I'd rather have two lane roads everywhere with roundabouts and calming and keep everybody at a reasonable speed. You get places off fast. You don't get places fast because people get stuck at bad intersections and they get in accidents because they're tailgating and impatient because all of our main roads are runways where people can drive 80 miles an hour. If everyone drove 45 miles an hour on a safe road, a safe Three car lengths behind each other, you'd get someplace twice as fast. 
in the long run. I'm not trying to be quite this fast. I'm just trying to be fair. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just saying that's real. I hear what you're saying. I, I hear what you're saying about why you can't perform it. But, but that's the reality. The reality is, I, I personally think our money is, mis, is, is misguided because everyone wants wide the road because you can point to it and say, look at this shiny wide road. I'm making your traffic back. Hey, it's not. No. Why you double the size of the road with double the cars on there? Because everyone thinks it's fair, but it's not. You're better off doing intersections and you're, you're better off coming with multi modal systems. How about a street bike that fit me versus a You want that to be like our pristine showcase road for, I, I put it on to look at that road for the whole lot of it. I, I don't, I'll reach out to Chad with Public Works and have him look at that stretch with his, trans, his transportation people just to see if it's been assessed. Most likely it's been assessed at some point in time or another, especially if, if there's projects going on there because they have to do all kinds of studies. No, they have to. Uh, I'll, I'll pull it. They've, they've done the studies. He's already passed it. Okay. <laughs> it's just Mike it. Ron. He's the light guy. He's not going to go the other way. Did you have a question? That was me. Okay. All right. Last question of the night. I'm sure. And least fun for you. I know. I know. I know. 